Good Monday morning, Ospreys. I'm Ryan Hennessy alongside Alex Gatlin, Coach Driscoll. It's here. It's here. It's game day. We're, uh, there's a new segment we're doing, Center Court with Matthew Driscoll, Coach Matthew Driscoll here. Uh, you just got back from a, a little road trip. Yeah, a little road trip, and actually we're getting ready for a couple home games. Thank goodness we have 14 this year and two this week, today and, and Wednesday, and then we're going on a 10-day journey uh, for a long time to be away. So it's a it's a road trip, a quick one, and then two home games we're excited about tonight. Talking about the road trip, uh, UNF, big win. Big win over Illinois. Big Ten Conference. Pretty, pretty, pretty competitive, and uh, you guys did a good job winning 93-81 against Illinois. I, I really felt like coming out of the last season and kind of where your guys were, so to speak, going to the Bahamas really gave me a great peace of mind and my heart knowing their guys were still humble and understood exactly what they did, yet there was more work to do, so to speak. And going into the first game of the year, obviously on the road in the Big Ten, you always think to yourself, you know, how are they going to respond? What are they going to look like, so to speak? How are they going to play? Mm -hmm. And I was really, really excited from the get-go, from actually the trip, you know, getting there, their preparation, all the things that we normally do was very, very similar the way it's always been. So because of that, as a coach, you feel good that the guys are still locked into what got us there, so to speak, or what's got our program to where we've always wanted to be. So it was, it, it was an exciting time for me as a coach to make sure we started off on a good note. And I've had you on a radio show. We did a radio show, but you always talk about one or no. But I'm going to talk about this really quickly. I know you, you don't want to talk about stats, but Dallas Moore, 26 points, 10 assists. I mean, the assist numbers are going up this year, and that's something that's really impressive. Bo Beach, 25 points, seven three-pointers, seven for eight. That's something that really was impressive. Birds of Trey really coming in. Uh, Trent Mackey, 13 points. But obviously the one thing I wanted to ask you is the assist numbers of Dallas Moore. I have always seen, you know, he's putting up these numbers, but now becoming a, from a freshman and now the progression you've seen. How have you seen from freshman year to junior year now Dallas Moore and the assist numbers, the points, the leadership of him? Well, the one thing about Dallas is, and, and the first thing that comes to mind is he was kind of thrust into the position. Because if you remember, we really didn't have anybody that year. Was We had three or four different pieces. We were thinking about who could we plug in. And we thought Dallas could be one of them. But obviously, as a freshman, that's a lot of to throw at a guy. And you have to go through that freshman phase as far as being prepared and being ready. I think when he went to Indiana and had 27 as a freshman, I think yeah. we kind of figured it out right then. That joker might be ready. <laughs> so that, that was his seventh Big Ten game that he played in, an eighth for Bay Bay and, and Bo. Um, so we played a lot of Big Ten teams. You know, he's averaging 18 a game, Dallas, in the Big Ten. So he might end up being one of their all-time leading scorers there you go. You know, without any playing little games. But the one statistic that stands out about Dallas is he's really, really done a great job from his freshman year to now in a couple different phases. Number one, getting his shot off quicker because he's really got it. Get, get better at being more consistent. The more consistent you are, the better your percentages are going to be. So that's one thing we looked at. Watching film of, of guys like Chris Paul, Steph Curry, um, um, uh, Mario Chalmers, uh, um, uh, uh, Michael Conley from the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, Damian Lillard, not for their scoring, but for them getting downhill and finding guys. And now where are you looking? Where are you looking for these assists? Where are they coming from? And how can you create two or three guys to guard you, which he can because of his quickness. And then, who, bam, who are you going to find? Who are you going to get a shot for? So that's been huge for his development. But on top of all the statistics that you said, the biggest statistic that I think that was out there, he had no turnovers. I was about to yeah. say, zero turnovers. Yeah. That's something that really impressed us so, as well. So when you have no turnovers, you know, and, and he was more excited that he didn't have any turnovers. <laughs> after no, the no game, of course. You know, than the other yeah. things. You know, and then, of course, Bo, you know, you talk about Bo and – the one thing about Bo is he, he's got to be a 40-plus percent for three-point shooter because he's that good. So we've really, really, really honed in on him from last year. The one thing about being a college basketball coach is you've got a two-fold situation. How much better can you make your current guys? Mm -hmm. And then how great of recruits can you bring in? Because when you, the better the recruits, the better the competition, the better your program. And the better you make your guys with better recruits, the better the guys are going to be, so the byproduct is you win. So it's really a double-edged sword, so to speak. You know, you don't want to bring in guys just to sit there and hope they finally get on the floor sometime. You want to bring in guys that have an opportunity. Yeah. So it's with, with, with all of our guys. I mean, Bebe Daniels, I mean, that dude was 6'11", 270. Yeah. Chris yeah. Davenport, that joker was, you know, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, Chris Davenport, Jay Billis put it out on time on target is what it called. He has the highest percentage of points in America on wow. his passes that lead to assists. No one has given more points than him last year. He was, he was seventh, but he had the highest percentage as far as being on time on target. He was top 10 in America and making the right passes. So we had a lot of pieces. We had four guys that had three or more assists. And that, 
to me is sharing the sugar and being unselfish. And I remember asking you, I was like, you know, baby, why don't you put him in the starting lineup? You said that's not his thing. He likes to come off the bench, and you know, that's something that I think honestly can be in your power. Coming off the bench, a player like that, that really is a powerful side that you guys have off the bench, that strength. So that's that's something exciting. I know we we talked about Bo Beach and Yeah, Bo Beach, for example. We tried to get him on the show today. But he's actually in the gym right now, shooting around, trying to improve upon that seven for eight from three-point line. How do you see him developing this season and being an even bigger part? To, I mean, he's already a big part to the team. Where well, do you I, see him going? There's actually going to be about seven guys in the gym early today because <laughs> yeah. we have classes, so they can't get the shooter on. And people yeah. don't understand. Like last year, when we played in the semifinals against Lipscomb, mm -hmm. when we had shooter on during the during the day, we had two or three people there because our guys had classes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you say to yourself, well, there are a lot of missed classes. And so, well, they're student athletes and mm -hmm. you're supposed to be going to class. So that doesn't send a good message. So we get them in the gym whenever we can, fit them in during their day. I um, always like to get them a nap, make sure they get a nap and have a normal game day routine. But Bo, the thing about Bo, and, and you bring up a great point, and, and I don't think people understand this, like he's really driven. I mean, he, he, since the day we, we signed him, he's driven to be as great as he can be. He wants to be a pro at the highest level he can possibly be at. And he's going to get some opportunities. Of course. Because he's 6'9 now with shoes on. Mm -hmm. And when you have a 6'9 guy that can shoot like that with the range that he has, it isn't like he's standing on a line. You know, sometimes, I don't know if you guys remember, remember when he went up from the State Farm logo and he threw it down to Nick <laughs> and Nick got a layup? Like, he was going to shoot that. I was like, whoa. But, 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 but the thing about Bo is he's really, really honed in on making sure I'm 6'9. I don't have to shot fake. I don't have to be, I, I can shoot over everybody. So let's just be smooth. And so we really, really, really try to work on him, both mentally, because that's a big part of basketball, mm -hmm. and the physical part of it. But you go back to Bebe Daniels. Here's a kid that's picked to be All-League, right? We have three guys, six, seven or bigger, that were on the all preseason All-League team. Mm. The thing about Bebe and Chris that makes him special, but you say Bebe coming off the bench, I actually went to him when Romello got injured. And I said to him, look, here's a situation. He said, Coach, if, 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 if it's best that I start, then, then I'll do that. And I said... I don't care that it's best that you start because I'm not into that. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's best for you. Like, what do you really want to do? Coach, I want to come off the bench. I love coming off the bench. I said, great, then we'll figure it out. But at least we have that communication, that yeah. understanding. Mm -hmm. And you talk about Romello's injury, uh, the update with him, and what you guys are doing to fill in spots. Um, Nick Malunga? Malunga. Malunga. I knew I was going to butcher it. I'm sorry. That's okay. But, I mean, red shirt last year, correct? correct. And now come back, 25 minutes, nine points. Had a good game on Friday. Is he in your starting lineup tonight? Is that what you guys think? Yeah, you know, with Romello being out, you, you got a bunch of different options. You can go big. You can go with a smile of 6'9", 240. You, you can go smaller with, with a guy like Nick Malunga, Aaron Bottiger, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Osborne Blunt. You, you can go a lot of different directions. And because we have so many movable pieces, it really makes it nice. And because Bo is 6'9", and Chris and Bebe are 6'7". Play the 4 or 5, any of them could, really. He's played the... Two, three, he yeah. plays all those positions, Bo, in his career. Mm -hmm. And we've actually just moved Bebe and Chris to the three. So we actually have the ability to be even bigger. So Romello's doing a great job. He's coming through. He Honestly, like everything else, when you have an injury, it's, it's not only is it day by day, but it's really body feel. 6'11", 245 is completely different than, than us. Yeah. So how does your body feel compressing against that injury? How does your body feel as that injury continues to improve? And so you got to be careful with that, and you got to go by more of what they're feeling as opposed to what you're seeing. Because there may not be swelling, but it still might have some an impingement in what he's trying to do. So it, it, it's going great, and we feel great about where he is right now, but we don't want to be unintelligent and force it along, and the next thing you know, he's out even longer. Nick Malunga, you know, when you look at him and you look at his game and, and you see his numbers and everybody loves people to put points on the boards. Yeah. He was a big-time scorer in junior college. Um, but we chose to sit him out because of Jalen Nesbitt, and mm -hmm. we just didn't feel like he was going to get the right amount of minutes. So why play 100 minutes in one season when you can play 1,000 minutes if you sit out? You know in what I'm saying? Extra season. Yeah, in no an extra season. Yeah, no exactly. doubt. Exactly. And figure out what you're doing. It takes those guys a little bit of time to get used to Oh, yeah, the transition basketball. from high school to college has got to be and difficult. high school to junior college to mm -hmm. college. Of course. Know? So, so this, this was even a little bit different. But the guy I think that nobody's going to talk about because he didn't score any points that, that we really, really felt good about was Aaron Bottiger. Like, Aaron Bottiger has a chance to really, really, really do something special for us this year. Buddy of his right That's, here. I would say, I, I've, I've gone to school with him since I was in kindergarten. We played basketball together from middle school and oh, high wow. school. Yeah. Okay, cool. Coach Collins a good man. Oh, he's a yeah, great yeah, man. Yeah, really, really. But, but, but Aaron, obviously the ACL injury is a freshman. It's mm -hmm. tough to come back. A little bit of a mental psyche. Well, he's a shooter anyways because we're all whacked out. Mm -hmm. but, a little bit of, <laughs> but a little bit of a mental psyche with the injury coming back. But now he's really, really, really done a great job of understanding I just got to do what I do. I got to be who I am. And, and 
and he had five defensive rebounds. Mm -hmm. he, he made pushed the ball up the floor, made great passes, was very simple. He never took a bad shot, and he never took a shot because he, I even asked him after the game. He's like, Coach, I never really got a look, which was great that he didn't feel like he had to be out there to make a three. Mm -hmm. Like that was his only contribution was, was to yeah. just make a three. Yeah. And I think that whacked him out a little bit last year. You know, he went one for seven, I think, in our opener against South Carolina. So that was, to me, that was one of the greatest things to see was Aaron's ability to go out there and do and do what he's capable of doing, even though he didn't make any threes. Exactly. You know, and Trent Mackey, I mean, he's 12th best shooter in America. And we always laugh all the time when we joke around him. He's got one of the best jobs in America. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because all he has to do is just sit there and shoot. You yeah. Because all those other guys handle it and pitch it and play, you know, Dallas and Bo and Chris and Bay Bay. He's got to sit on the edge and just and just threes. Hey, yeah, just, hey, guys, you know where I'm at. <laughs> like, here I am over here. Like, nobody's guarding me because everybody's guarding everybody else. You know? <laughs> he got fouled a couple times shooting threes. He made, they cut the lead to nine. We came back down, Dallas went downhill, Trent filled up, gave him a nice little flip pass. He got a foul and one four-point play, put us back up 13, was a huge play. Yeah. And then the next time down, we find Nick Malunga in the corner. Uh, Dallas Moore went downhill, they helped on him. Nick was just standing in the corner, we put orange cones on, he was standing right below the orange cone, we don't put him during the game. <laughs> but he was standing right, right where he's supposed to be. And Dallas just, you talk about Dallas getting those assists, yep. that's part of the maturation. Where are your guys supposed to be? Now the guys better be there. Yeah. You know. Dallas makes a pass, boom, he makes a three. And then the other one was he went downhill. Chris kind of filled up on the top, threw it right back to Chris. Chris got his foot set, bam, it's another three. So those were three huge threes. It's, it's interesting. You, 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 you guys mentioned something. I've gotten better as a coach. Our staff has really helped me to mature. As a coach, even though I'm 50, I want to continue to get You're better. You're 50? Oh, yeah. No way. Yeah, AARP. Right? <laughs> Good day. A Good day over 30, coach. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. But, <laughs> but, but the one thing is that I've wanted to do is I want to get better. But I told the guys, don't worry about shooting threes. Just keep shooting them because that's what we do. That, I was about mm. to say, we got, we got Nick. You hear now the new guy, Nick Mong, is hitting the threes. That's what we like to hear. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Oh, good. Okay. Because uh, Sorry. he's got the dunk. We can do it all. We can do this all one second. Coach has been going all day long. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back. We're going to talk some NFL. Got a uh, Steelers fan in the house. So we'll talk a little Steelers football. Jaguars pulled it off. We'll be right back on center court with Matthew Driscoll. We're back here on center court with Matthew Driscoll, coach Matthew Driscoll, Alice Gatlin, Ryan Hennessy. Uh, the fun thing about having coach on the show is he knows his sports. So we can talk about a whole other segment about some NFL football. Uh, obviously that happened yesterday. Lions, Packers played. We want to talk about that first. And that was, a, that was a weird one. I mean, the Lions, I don't know what they're drinking, that special juice in the, I don't know what it is, but they, they're, they're winning and the Packers are losing. Uh, first win at Lambeau Field. And these are some fun stats to listen to. The last time that the Packers lost to the Lions in Lambeau Field. George Bush Sr. was president. The Buffalo Bills were in the Super Bowl. One uh, of four. The, yeah, one of yeah, four one that of they four lost. Uh, the price of gas was $1.14. Michael, Michael Jordan had which, his first NBA title. Which we're not going to be getting down to no, $1.14. No. No. But we're close. We're above hey. 90 <laughs> Maybe, maybe. We can trim it down a little so bit. Jordan but. got his first dub. Yeah, he's got his first title that year. What was it, 80 what? Is this trivia? This is just like stats like we found. 87, 88. I don't even, I don't even know. Probably. The title was, I think it was 91. Okay. Yeah, 91. 91. Brett Favre was in Atlanta. I'm just trying to think how old I was. <laughs> <laughs> and the internet was created finally. Like finally, internet you was getting on. You weren't even born yet. Yeah, I wasn't born yet. I wasn't in college yeah. coaching yet. Oh wow. Mm -mm. Uh, no, I mean I was semi. Semi. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. that's a big win. Lions over the Packers, 18 to 16. Matt Stafford, 243 yards, two touchdowns, and interception. Aaron Rodgers had a game, pretty good game, 333 yards, two touchdowns. Lacey's out though. I, I, well, I think number one, this is your third loss in a row. I'm almost positive. Yeah. Two of them yeah. on the road. This was at home, obviously against the Lions. They probably thought, you know, this was their get right game and get back on the right track game, being at home front. But I really think their struggles are on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, oh yeah. It's not going to be. I mean, it's obviously you can't give up those kind of points in all their, their losses. Yeah. Even in a couple of their wins early, 
Rodgers just happened to be a little bit better than, than, than their other guys. So I think they got to work on their defensive situations and see where they're at. Well, they're the one defense I've been following because they're my defense for fantasy right now, <laughs> and they've been putting up negative numbers the last two weeks. So you I don't need, really know what's going on with that. You need to trade that. Yeah. yeah. Get rid of that one. I don't know how fantasy works, but you need to trade it. I don't, I'm not even going to trade. They're going straight to waivers. Yeah, I, yeah. I would too. No one's going to pick them up either. Nope. Yeah, third straight loss. I want to move on to uh, my Giants. You know, learn that I'm a Giants fan. And, man, was it, it, it was tough. New England played New England. Uh, the last time that New England beat the Giants was December 29, 2007. Um, and, and they won on a last-second field goal last night. New England beat the New York Giants. Tom Brady, 26 of 42, 333, 34 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Had a good game. Eli had a better game, 22 of 44, 361 yards, two touchdowns. Odell Beckham Jr., 104 yards. Had that big one in the beginning. He should have had the one at the end, too, if he would have held on to it. I loved his shoes. Those <laughs> shoes, those American yeah, flag shoes The military cool. and, you know, kind of a little Paris. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. Tweet, tweet mm -hmm. to it as well. I, I think the one thing about it, if you look at the, um, uh, New England and you look at their culture and you look at their process, we, we actually watch film. Uh, there's a great YouTube clip out there, and it shows about the last play in the Super Bowl. And it shows how they prepared for that particular play throughout the whole entire season. You know about the Malcolm Butler the, play? That the, was the, the first time. Wow they ever had to go to strong three, which means three outs. Mm -hmm. They usually go strong two was the most they ever went to. And as soon as they went strong three, the guy upstairs yells down to the guy, get Malcolm, get Malcolm, get Malcolm. And the coach turns around and says, Malcolm, get in, Malcolm, get in. Undrafted free agent. It's a great clip, though. I get goosebumps thinking about it. But it's a great clip about preparation and what it really takes in order to be a champion and how you have to make sure that all your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted mm -hmm. because you never know. It may never come to fruition. You may never get that play ever. But they showed the practice clips, and Malcolm was getting burnt every single practice. They were showing the clips. And what happened was when they went out to the wideouts, if you remember, when they stacked them, I forget the guy's name, the defensive back, but he turned to Malcolm and said, I'm going to jam him. You go underneath. Because Malcolm had been going over the top. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to jam him. You go underneath. And sure enough, he, he jammed him. He Malcolm jammed. went underneath. And, he, and, he, and he, it, it was, it's an amazing thing how New England, their culture, and, and how they have things j just in line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they got rid of Revis. Uh, and, and really, it's Malcolm's. He's the, he's the number one corner. He was going up against Odell. And besides that one play, that was really – he was doing a good job. And Odell was – Slapped him on the behind and said, you're doing a good job. I mean, respect to you. He's so. pretty good. Though. He's a Beckham's pretty, Beckham's pretty <laughs> good. Beckham's pretty good. He did a good job. Uh, Julian Edelman broke his foot. Might, right, might not return until the playoffs. That was a big loss for them. Uh, will you see these teams again, Alex, you think, in the playoffs? No. No, these teams, the New York Giants are not heading up the same way that the New England Patriots are going. That. I do not see the Giants making it in the Super Bowl this year. We'll I'm see. I'm sorry, buddy. We'll see. The Cowboys. We'll yeah. see. Oh, <laughs> the seventh straight loss to the Cowboys? I, I, don't, I don't see any NFC, NFC East team making it. What have they the lost their last five? By Seven. Like a total yeah. of ten points, though? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, but it's something crazy, right? I love it, though. I absolutely love it. As a Giants fan, <laughs> I love it. But we're going to move on to your team now, the Steelers playing the Browns. So Landry Jones was a starter. Big Ben was – Healthy, but he was the second stringer. Yeah. I don't know what they were trying to be cautious with them. They wanted to be cautious because obviously they got a bye week coming up. Give him two weeks off, and obviously he's going to be back to, to normalcy, so yeah. to speak, and he's going to have the ability to go out there. And do what? And, and do play. better than what he did tonight? or what? You know, the one, the one thing about it, and I don't know about you guys, but I just I thought the, the line did such a great job of not letting anybody get to him. Oh, yeah. And obviously he, he really found his – his niche, so to speak. I mean, he throws three or four of the same single passes. And, and obviously, Brown is, is as good as wide receiver as there is. You know, I think he had 10 catches and, yeah. and, and yep. a couple of touchdowns. But, you know, the thing about Ben Roethlisberger is he's about as tough as they come. He is truly a Pittsburgh guy because mm -hmm. Pittsburgh's all about being blue collar. It's all about, you know, everything that was about Pittsburgh back mm -hmm. in the day and when the city became so popular and so famous when, you know, when the Steelers were rolling, yeah. you know, back in the 70s. And, and, and Ben Roethlisberger fits in so well. Uh, with his toughness, um, so it's you know it's, it's it's not a surprise that he played, and it's yeah. not a surprise he played well. This is like the first time he's ever done it with a bigger shoe or a bigger this right? or a bigger yeah. that. So I mean, he came back uh, 379 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, 123.2 passer rating. Uh, Martavius Bryant six catches, 170 yards and touchdown. Same route every time. Yeah, and, and, and then you just got send this, him long, and then yeah. you got a guy named just really Brown. just send him long, and he's gonna go get it. Well, you know what's great too is, is Roethlisberger didn't have to have a lot of time to make that pass. Yeah. So they're a man-to-man -man coverage. Let's run a couple streaks. Let's run a couple fades. 
So he was able to just kind of go, and Ben could just go back and throw it. And yeah. If he catches it, great. If he doesn't, it goes out of bounds, and we'll go to the next play. Mm -hmm. So you must be really happy. Steelers 30, Browns 9. Moving on to the Jacksonville Jaguars, which I was oh. very surprised and happy about. Um, it was an ugly game for Bortles, 188 yards, two touchdowns, an interception. A lot of those passes, though, were dropped. He had a couple interceptions that Allen Robinson kind of tipped out of the safety's hand, almost another interception at the end of the game, an easy drop interception on the last drive of the game. Um, it was about the 45-yard line, and uh, Blake Bortles got pulled down to end the game with a face mask by Elvis Duvermill. 15 yards, enough for a 53-yard field goal. The new guy got rid of you know, our old kicker from Scobie, years, yeah, Scobie. Yeah, Scobie. You and took Scobie from us. You gave us a six-round yeah, pick for him. Well, he's gone him now. <laughs> he's gone now. <laughs> he's back in Jacksonville. Yeah. yeah. And, and we talked about that, and Blake Bortles, you know, with the didn't, didn't have a great game. Alan Hearns, 100, or, excuse me, 50, five catches, 62 yards, and a touchdown. Scored a touchdown in the last seven games. The last person to do that, Des Bryant. So, I mean, undrafted free agent. You're talking about guys stepping up in their roles. Des, uh, Alan Hearns, excuse me, something like that. Devin House, you were on the radio show today. Two interceptions. I mean, you're talking about a guy who struggled at the beginning of the season, really stepped up, and now two interceptions. And, I mean, he's really stepping up for the Jaguars on defense. And Coach, you had a cool story about yeah. Devon House as well. Well, you know, House, I think, you know, we kind of got mad at him against the, the uh, Titans. Oh, well, I was oh, at yeah. that game. Uh, not the Titans, the uh, Texans. Texans. Yeah. I was at you that know, we game. We got mad at him for a couple things, but we really talked about a fine line. He and Colvin had an interesting, him and Aaron, this summer in Arizona. They talked a lot about why don't we have more interceptions. And it's a fine line, just like it was against the uh, Texans. Yeah. You know, that turn your head just in time to see the ball and you get your hands just in time. To... So that was interesting. But what's crazy is his wife's expecting twins. So she was like, super happy because he keeps his interceptions balls. And obviously with kids, you know, if you give one a ball and you don't give the other one a ball, you know, they get a little bit upset. So she was really excited. He got two interceptions. So both the twins will get a ball when they're born. Uh, so that, 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 that was cool. The, the one thing I think, uh, we were really disappointed in Myers when he missed his, you know, his field goal, obviously, against Indianapolis, yep. which was very similar, almost on the same side, almost the same distance. We had two chances against him. He had the 48-yarder, and then he had the 53-yarder well, three, if you want to count the yeah, timeout, yeah, too. Yeah. Time but, 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 but here's a kid that, you know, is a young kid. Learn from your experiences, and then the next opportunity comes around, you know, can we go yeah. forward with it? And to, to him, you got to give him a lot of credit. Absolutely. You yeah, know, absolutely. And, and, and kickers are like shooters. You know, they're, they're, there's a big mental aspect to it. I remember talking to Josh when I talked to Scobie this summer. When I went down to practice, you know, the firehouse sub, which everybody got yesterday. Yep. He said it was crazy. Like, one time he was out there, and he was getting ready to kick, and he looked up, and there it is on the Jumbotron. If Josh Scobie makes this 47 yarder, everybody's <laughs> going to get – and he was like – you know, he had to take walk away and regroup himself, you know, because as he looked up, he's like, gee, many Christmas. You know, it doesn't sound I'm feeding like much. I'm feeding people now. Yeah, it doesn't I'm sound like much, but, you know, it was a big but, – but, but, you know, to, to the Jaguars' credit, and one thing I think we got to understand about the Jaguars – like, they go up there, and I think they were like five-point dogs, six-point dogs, whatever it was. And I think both teams had similar records. But now we come back with a win. We got Indianapolis coming in. On, we got Thursday night, right? Uh, Thursday night, yep. uh, Tennessee Titans. Titans. But then we got we, we have Indianapolis. We got to play Indianapolis somehow. I don't no, know. We, go we, San got Diego. One, we got one at the end of the season. No, we got San Diego. That's right. We go Tennessee, and then we go to San Diego. Mm. So we got a chance to maybe take this thing, get a home one mm. on Thursday night on national TV. I think Gus is 2-0 and on Thursday nights. And then – keep going and, and get that little mojo. Yeah. And you want the mojo at the end. And our league isn't like our league's a blowout league. I mean, our conference mm -hmm. is, a, is a league that you can win at 500. Maybe sub-500 is going to win it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so we're still in the runnings. We're still in the mix. But him, him like me. One and oh. Yeah, one and one time. And yeah, <laughs> one game at a time. You're right. Three and six. Uh, Jaguars move to three and six on the season. We have a new segment. Uh, the tournament game, you said something about ballers and dudes. A little bit different between ballers and dudes. So ballers are – explain to me what a baller is because we're going to talk about ballers of the week. Well, ba ballers are, are just dudes that, like, they go to another level and they understand what, what's, at, what's at hand. They understand what's, what's going on, what's in front of them, and they make plays. They, they, they make big shots. I mean, there's a lot of our guys Friday night that were, that were, that were, that were ballers. And dudes are good – Dudes are good dudes. I mean, I like yeah. dudes. You guys dudes are, are great, too. Yeah, you guys are good ballers. dudes. But they're not that next level. And, you know, a baller is a guy that goes to that next level. So, so that would be the difference between a baller and a dude. Well, so we have, we have these, these handy-dandy whiteboards that Alex got this morning. We're going to do a ballers and dudes. So right now the baller of the week, uh, for me, I'm going to go first. Uh, the Pittsburgh wide receivers. I'm sorry about my chicken scratch, Ryan, but pit, <laughs> pit wideouts. Um, your, your Pittsburgh Steelers, Martavius Bryant, who, of course, you know, the person I don't start in fantasy this week. Uh, 178 yards and a touchdown. Would have won my league, but of course not. And then Antonio Brown, probably one of the best receivers 
in, in the game right now. No I mean, doubt. Uh, 10 catches, 139 yards, two touchdowns. The guy's, the guy's a baller. He's definitely a baller. Those wide receivers, with the help of Big Ben, really stepped up. So those are, those are my ballers of the week. Alex, you want to? I've got Adrian Peterson. He, uh, he tied O.J. Simpson for the most 200-yard games in a, uh, in a career. So uh, I've got him. He had wow. 203 yards on 26 rushes and one touchdown. So that's my baller this yeah, week. Yeah, tied him with uh, the most 200-yard games in a career at six. So O.J. Simpson, yeah. one of the best ever to live. It, I think Adrian Peterson's up there, too. Yeah, so. you know, Oklahoma, he was really, really, really talented. And really, I thought, you know, coming out, I thought he might have an opportunity to maybe be one of the best ever because he runs – he runs downhill. He's and all, angry. He, yeah. And he's always going at you. He's not afraid to, you know, to kind of hit guys and get off guys. Yeah. Um, not quite like Barry Sanders, but Barry Sanders wasn't afraid either. He was just a little bit, a little smaller. We got you, your baller. So my ballers, I'm going on one here. Osprey Athletics. <laughs> huh, what a weekend for Osprey Athletics. You know, it starts Friday night. Men's and women's basketball get, get great wins on the road. And uh, congratulations to Coach Gibbs, his first ever game as our women's basketball coach. And they get a win at UMKC. We won Illinois. Volleyball goes 3-0, and gets a sweep on Friday night. And then Saturday, they come back and get another sweep, 3-0 and on Saturday. So now they move into the tournament. They'll play JU on Wednesday. And then Wednesday, and Sunday, Saturday night, our, our UNF men's soccer team. What a great, great, great story. Derek and I almost came in at the same time. We, we really continued to build. We continued to, to, to understand what we were doing. The cultures were really, really close as far as what we were trying to do. This is their third championship game that they've been in. Oh, wow. And what in dominating fashion. Uh, they win 7-0. Yeah. Or, or should we say 7-0, as they say in the soccer <laughs> family. And it was just unbelievable um, uh, what they did. And the crowd, over 1,600 people at the game. I mean, it was just phenomenal. Today, 1 o'clock, we have the selection show just to see who we'll play against in the NCAA tournament. And uh, it's great. So, so what a great weekend for another, Osprey Athletics. Another cool stat about that is Helder Peachman actually scored the first hat trick ever in the Atlantic Sun Conference Championship game. In six minutes? Yeah, yeah. Off the bench? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I'd like to know at pregame meal what he was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> like, am I going to get this? Goals, I mean, goals, goals. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get in. I'm going to knock a couple around just see what happens, you know. So, yeah, it was a great weekend for our mm. folks. So, so we just did the ballers. Now we're going to go on to the dudes. Dudes are they're not they're not as good as ballers. Didn't have the best week. And uh, my 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 dude of the day, I guess, if you want to say dude of the week, is Elvis Dumerville. We got this right here. Uh, Elvis. Against the Jaguars helped us out. Uh, it was zero. He gave us life. Yeah, we, we had last play of the game. Blake Bortles was not in field goal range. Uh, gets sacked, but gets pulled on his face max. Automatic 15-yard penalty. Moves up in field goal range. Jaguars kick a field goal, win the game. So thank you, Elvis, for giving us a three and six on the on the season. He technically could be the baller for Jaguars yeah, too. I, I, so could, there's you that. Could, you could go with that. You can go with that. But <laughs> who you got for your dude? Again, I've got the Packers. The Packers defense was atrocious. I know they've got injuries, but they've lost the last three straight games. They've got to do something to turn it around. Otherwise, this season's not going to look great for them. Uh, they're probably still going to make the playoffs, but they've got to do something. What do you I, see? I, I, I agree with you. I think that's, to me, that's one of their, their, their biggest Achilles right now. Mm -hmm. I, unfortunately, mine was a baller and a dude in the same <laughs> game, you know, which, is, which it is what it is. But Peyton Manning, uh, obviously broke the record, broke Brett Favre's record, and it's become the most yards ever passing in NFL history. And he's just a great, great, great talent. And obviously what he's done and what he continues to do. I mean, he's had special games this year as well, too. But then I think he was 5 for 20 with four interceptions when they pulled him out of the game. And I was going around talking to the chapters when it occurred. And I was just like, I mean, was, I was almost in shock, like, Wow, Peyton Manning got pulled. You know what I mean? Yeah, in the and, same and quarter too. Yeah. But they said he was injured. He had a little yeah. injury. Yeah, he's, he's got it, and, and, and I'm worried about it because when you get a foot injury and you get an injury that's that has something to do with where you're planting, where you're throwing, and all yeah. those kind of things, that can linger on for a long time if you don't take the right steps to make sure it's healed. So. Well, I think it was his back foot too. So that is his plant foot. That is his plant throat for when he goes to throw. So maybe he needs to talk to Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, hey, there you go. Should, get it, get his shoe going. But get some Pittsburgh uh, life in him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the reason why we had this show, obviously, starting a day, big game tonight. Everyone's really excited. There's a different hype going into last year, especially when the tournament. Uh, opening day for UNF basketball, UNF Arena against UT Rio Grande Valley, uh, 7 o'clock. I, I, I'm excited as much as you are, I'm sure. Uh, you're gonna, you got to get out of here. you got to go plan. you got to go plan. Well, the thing is, uh, you know, they used to be UT Pan Am. They're out of the WAC, which is New Mexico State's been pretty dominant in that league, going to the NCAA tournament several times. And uh, actually, Devon House is from New Mexico State, FYI. But 
you know, they're, obviously they're a team that comes in. They have two fifth-year senior transfers, which all the mid-major wins over the weekends. You know, everybody was saying, why so early? Why so much? A lot of parity now in college basketball with that fifth-year transfer situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those guys come in with great experience. They've already played games. So, and, and they got a couple guys. They get the kid from Alabama that can pick and pop. They can make threes. He's six, seven kid. They got a kid inside, a sophomore lefty, who you're going to like. He can really score the ball around the rim. They got a, a lead guard. It's, it looks like Dallas, a little lefty, quick as a cat. Can get downhill and score. They just played Miami, so they're playing like a two-game spread through Florida on the way back. And then we'll go there next year. Okay. So it's like a home and okay. home situation. Cool, cool. Yeah, so 7 o'clock tonight, we're really excited. It's, it's uh, Obviously, it's military appreciation night as well. Yeah. And uh, the flag for the national anthem is almost going to cover the whole court. Oh, wow. So that's it's going to be, be awesome. yeah, very emotional, very, 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 very moving to honor those that are keeping us safe so that we can do what we love to do. Renovating right that arena, Coach. It's game day. Appreciate you, Absolutely. you coming on. Thank you all. Appreciate you. We'll be on Good every luck, Monday. Uh, this is uh, Coach Driscoll's show, uh, Center Court with Matt Driscoll. I'm Ryan Hennessy, Alex Gatlin, Coach Driscoll. Game day inside. I'll see you guys. Game day! Thank you. <laughs>